It's a long shot, but nature is the mother of invention. Hell Hole's a show original done by the Adams family. No, not Gomez and Morticia, mourn the pity, but John Adams and Toby Poser. Who did Hellbender? A show original that I really like, showed some ingenuity, and also showed what you could do with a modest budget when you actually understand how to do horror. So, they decided to go the creature feature route with this spin on the thing. There's a fracking crew, fricka 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 fry, sis boom ba, sir being dig, gain ra ra ra. Yeah, they're in Serbia. They're digging. They unearth a French soldier that's still alive from the 1800s. And it turns out this French soldier houses a parasite that needs a host to carry on. So, yeah, it's basically just a spin on the thing. <laughs> There's a mix of, like, 50s, 60s science over reasoning, you know, themes, as well as 80s body horror. And, admittedly, that is actually where the movie does have its biggest strengths. Now, I will say that this is a couple steps down from Hellbender. And that's not to say it's bad. There's enough to recommend here. But, I really did like Hellbender. I was looking forward to this. And I do appreciate what John Adams and Toby Poser do. Because they do understand how to do horror. However, their style, I don't think, totally carried this film all the way to the finish line. That also could be due to the fact that this film had a modest budget <coughs> and tried to go the creature feature route, and some body horror effects look pretty good. But I will also say that some of the acting was a little bit dicey. In fact, quite a bit dicey. There are a lot of people to me that don't really have distinctive characters. Some are just there to be killed off, which is fine. But also, the film kind of stumbles over its pacing, <coughs> even though once it kicks in with the body horror it does, you know, kick it up in gear. Now, again, there's enough to recommend with this, <clears throat> but I do have the aforementioned issues that I talked about. Now, uh, John Adams and Toby Poser do play John and Emily, respectively. And then you do have um, Sophia, <coughs> uh, that, you know, she's a pretty, a pretty girl, I'll say that much. She plays a scientist that is actually very interested in what this creature could provide. And then there's also a uh, main scientist, Nicola, who really wants this creature to carry on. Maybe it actually could be a great day for science. Now, again, a lot of this stuff and really could just be seen as a series of tropes. And there are a few moments where I'm like, okay, this is just monumentally stupid for the sake of it. But the gore, <clears throat> the body horror, and enough uh, good stuff actually does you know, make me recommend this enough. Still watch Hellbender, check it out, and I look forward to seeing what John Adams and Toby Poser can end up doing. <clears throat> so, nevertheless, I am going to get into spoilers pretty quickly. There isn't a lot really to spoil with this one, but it's on Shudder if you want to check it out. Shudder is a great streaming service, by the way, especially if you love horror. If you're like me, and I know I'm like me, and if I wasn't like me, who the fuck else would I be? You're going to want to get Shudder. 3, 2, 1, spoilers. So, basically... <clears throat> We start of in 1814, some of Napoleon's soldiers are um, on the verge of starvation. They run into a lady with a horse, or at least somebody with a horse, and then they take the horse back to their encampment. They're going to kill the horse for meat, and then the creature busts out the goddamn horse and goes inside one guy to live as, you know, to live at, you know, and use him as a host. So, okay, <clears throat> smash cut to this Serbian, you know, fracking crew. And it is what it is. I mean, it is enough of a creature feature and has a breezy pace to it. It does have a nice use of punk metal type music. I don't actually even know if that's necessarily a genre, but the music beating you over the head with it certainly was a choice. <clears throat> um, we get introduced to the various characters, the main ones. <laughs> There's a guy named uh, Teddy that is the nephew of... Emily, and look, it is nice that while they understand, you know, how to make horror, that they don't always make themselves the central characters <clears throat> without allowing others to act out. This doesn't feel like a vanity project. It feels like they actually feel they can do it, and they aren't bad. They aren't bad actors, I, I will say that much. I'm not saying they're great, but they're not bad. <clears throat> um... So they end up drilling, causes some shrieking, <clears throat> there's some weird, weird shit going on. But mind you, what they end up finding is they end up finding the French soldier's body. Now, the drilling indicates that maybe there is a bigger creature underneath, because this 
particular creature is just one of the eggs that the mother may have laid. Kind of like the whole thing about an octopus discussion that's a little bit later on where an octopus, an octopus mother will basically starve itself, eat itself, just to make sure its eggs are okay. That seems pretty fucking stupid, but what do I know? I'm not a mother or an octopus, I know, as shocking as those facts may be for you to see as you're watching me on camera. So, as, um, as a French soldier, you know, basically is essentially trying to say kill, I mean, no, no mention of the fact that he's been buried for about 200 something years. <laughs> he's just there and nobody speaks French, Teddy speaks a little and then the parasite ends up infecting John by doing something really stupid. What kind of John would do something really... Hey, wait a minute. I'm a John and I do stupid shit. But you have to advance the plot in a monster movie, Creature Feature, by doing stupid stuff. <laughs> so, then he ends up kind of getting in a uh, you know discussion with a bearded guy, ends up killing him inadvertently because the creature... Both comes out of his mouth, out of his eyes, and out of his ass. I will say the CGI, I think, is where this where I'm like, ooh, they could have used a bit of a bigger budget there. Hellbender made the most of its budget. I hate keep going back to Hellbender, but it made the most of its budget. And I thought, <laughs> use the slime and the grime, and it's setting pretty well. This where I'm like, oh, they could have could probably probably should have left that in the drafts. But nevertheless, again, there is some uh, good stuff. Some of the acting, though, is questionable, suspect even. Um, the idea is basically this creature use it's like, you know, like a giant clam. A creature will use something as a host to live on, to nurture itself. Um, like an Argonaut, <laughs> not of Jason and the Argonaut fames. And then Nicola basically says, you know, this creature could end up being a benefit to science. Well, then that kind of goes tits up because <clears throat> after John gets totally blown up, the creature ends up getting inside this guy, um, this guy Donko. And the, basically he's like, you know, get this thing out of me. No, Nicholas says, we need to have you nurture that damn thing. It only wants men. It sees aggression to men and wants to take over men, <laughs> but doesn't go after women. But until it does at the end, um, but whatever, it's fine. So science over reasoning basically leads to that, um, you know, Emily telling this crew, go take him out into the goddamn woods and shoot him and keep a distance from him. Well, they don't. And then the creature ends up killing them. So they decide they're going to leave. And then the creature ends up in one guy. He goes in the goddamn water. The creature pops up. <laughs> And then seemingly drowns, despite the fact it's supposed to be a sea creature. But then it attacks Nicola and gets his intestines. And actually, uh, Sonya has to do something funny like stab him. But then his guts are like, get it out of me, get it out of me. This is right after he said, by the way, that he would be honored to be the host of this particular thing. But then he's a scientist and he, he's, he's book smart, not street smart. You don't necessarily want something that's going to eat you alive to use you as a host. But whatever, it's fine. And then the creature bursts out of him, is attacking Emily, and she says, fucking run! And they do. And then Teddy and Sonia are fine. They're, they're fine, seemingly. There's a newspaper, a uh, shot of a newspaper, where ten people died in a mysterious oil rig thing. We still don't know if there's a mother creature below the goddamn thing. There are more questions than answers. It's fine for what it is. It gets a B-. minus. Has good body horror effects and some decent stuff. It's not great. Hellbender's better. But I look forward to seeing what the Adams Family can end up doing. Yeah, I had to do that just at the end. So yeah, B-. minus. Agree, disagree, what I said. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.